my carving is all about going from this to this, while at the same time using only traditional hand tools. Hi, my name is Gene Felder. The name of my shop is Vermont Hand Carved Bowls, and we're located here in Central Vermont in Shrewsbury, Vermont. Most of the wood for my bowls comes right here at my property, so it's all locally uh, harvested uh, maple, uh, black cherry, black birch, everything that is grown here locally. I only carve green wood using traditional hand tools that you may not be familiar with, and I'm going to show you some of those. Let me tell you a little bit about the process. Basically, I start with a log like this, and I split it in half. And then I have to make the decision, do I want the split side to be down, okay, or do I want the split side to be up? Split side up is more traditional, and you wind up with a bowl similar to this, okay? Split side down is more of a Swedish technique. You can see where I've drawn the pattern on the log, and you wind up with a bowl, something like this. There's the outside of the log shaping the handles, giving it a natural flow. Let me show you some of the tools that I use. To hollow out the bowl, I typically use an adze. What happens, this natural shape of the adze goes down and scoops it right out. After I've done scooping out the ad, the, uh, the interior, then I'll use a carving axe to hew away most of the outside of the log. And then to get more of the shaping on the outside, I'll wind up with a draw knife, and I'll show you more about that a little bit later, as well as several different spoke shapes. Okay, these actually get the nice smooth surface on the outside, as well as some of the nice curves you see on some of these bowls. Let me show you various gouges I use and what exactly they do. So typically, most of the bowl is hollowed out with the ads, but sometimes, I can't quite get all of it, or I want to get hug out more. So I'll use a, a gouge like this. Pretty beefy. You can see it's really curved quite a bit. And the idea of that is it can get in here like the ads did, but again, just to fine tune it. After I've used that, I want to get a little smoother surface, so I'll go up to this ads here. And you can see the difference between the two ads. This one's going to give us less ridges, a nice smoother surface. Then there's certain specialty gouges I use. For instance, this bowl here, I don't know if you can tell, it has all these fluting that I put into it. Okay, and what I use there is again, it's a bent gouge, little, little slope to it, it's what they call a eight slope, and it just gets me the groove shape that I'm looking for. Sometimes I want to put some scalloping on the inside. Again, kind of hard for you to see maybe, but it's got all the scalloping on the inside. And there you'll use a gouge like this, again smaller, and it just slowly work my way around and get the nice grooved scalloping look to the bowl. If I'm looking to put some uh, uh, chip carving or some engraving on it. For instance, this bowl here, okay, with all the 
work, I'll typically use a bowl like, like this, a, a gouge like this one. Very sharp angle. I can get in there and create all the different patterns I'm looking to do. I also use chip carving knives to get those kind of features on there. Okay? And that's really just touching the surface of the gouges. I also want to show you now how I use the draw knife and the carving horse um, to fine tune um, even more of the product. So this is a carving horse and I use it quite a bit in the process of making my bowls and it's really flexible and convenient. For instance, I can take a bowl, put it like this, hold it, work on this side, take it, flip it, work on this side, go back here and work on this side as well. It just gives me a lot of flexibility, not having to deal with clamps and that sort of thing. So as I mentioned before, I, I take away a lot of the uh, uh, bulk with the carving axe and then I want to get more of the shape I would use the draw knife and that's a great place where I can go along the edges and the sides and really get a nice uh, uh, surface to where it's it's almost exactly what I want now I'm going to go into more of this I'm, I'm in the process of making demonstration type videos and I'll have more uh, detail about all of these processes so once I get it down with the draw knife, I can actually use a spoke shave and that'll still uh, make it finer and smoother yet. I don't use any sandpaper. The really sharp edges gives it a nice smooth surface as if a plane went over this, uh, um, giving it a really, really nice finished surface. And then I just uh, finish it off with some uh, 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 flaxseed oil, let it dry and I'm done. So anyway, be sure to check out my website, gfelder.com. Thank you and have a good day.